In this video, we'll cover the obstructions map coverage in SMS and how they affect an SRH2D model. We will discuss when to use obstructions, how obstructions can be used to represent complex piers, secondary bridge decks, debris, and other obstructions to flow. Flow obstructions create an additional drag force on mesh elements they intersect. This can affect velocity and water surface elevation for the element. Flow obstructions can be used to reasonably represent the energy losses due to structures but cannot provide detailed flow characteristics around said structure. Therefore, obstructions are best used when representing features that are not the primary focus of the hydraulic study. Using holes in the mesh is the preferred approach if a detailed representation of velocities and flow direction through a bridge opening is needed. If not, the use of obstructions can represent the average head loss associated with the bridge piers and can result in the similar water surface elevation upstream of the bridge. Both obstructions and holes can be used to represent complex piers. For complex piers with varying widths, such as in the pile cap, pier, and pier cap, it would typically be represented with an average pier width for the portion of the pier that is in the water for the flow condition being studied. Obstructions are an effective tool to represent complex hydraulic structures such as complex piers or dolphins. To create an obstructions coverage, right-click on the Map Data menu and select New Coverage. Expand the Models tree, then expand the SRH2D tree and select Obstructions. Complex piers are represented in the model using a feature point. The obstruction's bottom elevation is defined by entering the Z value for the feature point. For piers, this elevation would be set at a value below the bottom of the channel. To assign attributes for the complex pier obstruction, select and right-click on the feature point, then choose Assign Point Obstruction. This brings up the obstructions dialog. In this dialog, width or diameter, thickness, and drag coefficient are specified. The width or diameter is that of the pier we want to represent. The thickness is the distance from the bottom elevation specified for the feature point to the top at the low chord of the bridge deck. The dimensionless drag coefficient is applied to identify the shape of the complex pier or object. See Table A.1 in FHWA's Two-Dimensional Hydraulic Modeling for Highways in the River Environment for a list of these coefficients. The dolphins will be defined by a feature arc. When drawing the arc, it is best practice to keep the shape simple. An elevation for the feature arc is entered to define the bottom elevation. In the obstruction attribute dialog, width, thickness, and drag coefficient are specified. Once again, using holes in the mesh is the preferred approach for modeling the primary feature of study. When modeling with flow obstructions, SRH applies this drag force equation. The drag force applied to each element is calculated using C sub D, the dimensionless drag coefficient that represents the shape of the object, A sub P, the below water cross-sectional area of the obstruction projected normal to the direction of the approaching flow, rho, water density, U and V, velocity components. By providing the pier dimensions, SRH2D can calculate the drag force of the obstruction and artificially increase the roughness values at the impacted element or elements. Another application of obstructions is secondary bridges or features that interact with flow outside the area of primary study, such as a bridge or a utility. Examples would include this temporary crossing built for a construction project directly upstream of the bridge being studied or this cattle fence located upstream of another studied bridge. A benefit of obstruction arcs is that they do not have to align with mesh elements like pressure arcs and will assign drag to elements they intersect. They can also occupy the same space as obstruction points. Obstruction feature arcs, however, cannot cross holes in the mesh or extend past mesh boundaries. To define a bridge deck obstruction, create a feature arc at the location of a bridge deck. An elevation for the feature arc is entered to define the bottom elevation of the bridge deck, which is usually the low chord elevation. Flow is unimpeded until the water level reaches this value. To assign attributes for the deck obstruction, select and right-click on the arc, then choose Assign Arc Obstruction. In the Obstruction Attribute dialog, width, thickness, and drag coefficient are specified. 
The width represents the width of the bridge deck measured in the direction perpendicular to the road. The thickness is the distance from the low cord to the top of the bridge deck or railing. As the flow continues along the channel, we see when it begins to interact with the secondary bridge and drag causes the water surface elevation to rise. Debris and other obstructions can be modeled using a combination of obstruction feature points and arcs. Obstructions can also be used to model features that would otherwise not follow best practices for mesh editing. For example, when using a hole in the mesh, the footprint it generates should represent the average pier dimensions over the length of the pier stem that is below the water surface elevation. If it is observed that there is debris gathered around the base of the pier, the best practice would be to make a hole in the mesh representative of the pier and use obstructions around the pier instead of creating a mesh hole to represent both. Obstructions are also useful to show debris outside of the bridge extents. For example, if a fallen tree is observed to be downstream of the bridge, an obstruction arc would effectively represent it. Create a feature arc crossing the stream. Assign the elevation as inline with the ground surface and assign width, thickness, and drag coefficient. When the model runs, it will now better represent the debris observed at the site and have a more accurate water surface elevation. The obstructions coverage is a useful tool in 2D modeling as it allows quick representation of features that are not the primary focus of the model. It allows representation of complex features difficult to represent directly in the mesh geometry. To read more about obstructions, see FHWA's document, Two-Dimensional Hydraulic Modeling for Highways in the River Environment. Thank you.